welcome back. So we're going to keep going with our object replace tool or replace objects tool. And uh, what I want to do is start to get some more functionality uh, in place. So currently we have an empty window with a very generic label. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to add what they call an object field so we can assign objects that we want to have uh, be put in place of whatever exists in the scene. So what are we going to replace it with? Okay, so let's go back into Visual Studio over here. And the first thing I really want to do is I want to keep track of how many objects I have selected. So up in the variables region up here, I'm going to declare a private integer. And I'm going to call it the uh, uh, current selection count. All right. And we'll just initialize it to zero. That's fine. And what I want to do is I want to put this into a, a separate function. OK, so let's give ourselves some notes here. So I'm going to check uh, the amount of selected objects all right and we're gonna we're gonna actually put that functionality into a method so we're gonna create a private method called uh, get uh, selection selection yep there we go that'll be fine for now and we can actually do a lot with this but for now what we're going to do is we are going to just keep track of how many objects we have selected okay so this will be one of the first steps in uh, managing whether or not there is something actually selected. Okay, so what I want to do first is every single time that we go and check this, I'm just going to set the current selection count to zero. This will be zeroed out. And then just reassign it with the selection dot game objects. All right. Now you notice that the selected game objects actually returns an array of game objects. And in this case, this isn't exactly what we want to do. Okay. Um, I actually just want to get the length of that for now. So that'll, that'll give me the number of selected game objects in the scene. Okay, so with that in place, let's just call this now. Okay, so let's put it up here and we'll call it cool, like so. And what I want to do is start to add a little bit of styling in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to display the current. All right, so we're, we're going to say the uh, selection count. Let's do something like that. OK, and we'll just add on that current selection count dot to string. All right, so we'll convert it to a string. Cool. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to put all this into a, uh, a bit of a layout. So we have control over the spacing and stuff like that between the different UI elements. So in order to do that, we are going to put down the editor GUI layout dot begin vertical method. This allows me to create a vertical layout right off the bat. And anytime that you open up a layout, you need to end it. So there's a beginning and an end. All right, so this is a vertical layout. So to visualize that a little bit better, it's laying things out in a vertical fashion inside of the window. Okay, so now we have our label updated up right here, and we are now inside of a layout. Uh, and what I want to do now is I actually want to give it a little bit of space. So I'm going to say editor GUI layout dot space, like so. And we'll do the same for the bottom, just so we kind of pad it a little bit at the top and the bottom. Cool. All right, we need to put a semicolon right there. Keep in mind that we put the repaint down here. Uh, that way it's not inside of the, the layout. We don't want to update while we are inside of a layout before it gets closed, basically. Cool. So now if I were to go into the Unity scene here, just keep our tool open like so. Uh, what I can do is I can come in here and... I am going to create a couple of, uh, let's just do spheres for now. So let's create a bunch of spheres. So I'm just control D and copy and paste a bunch of these guys around here. Okay. And now what I want to have happen is I need this particular tool right here is to show the, the count. And in fact, we are already getting the count. So you can see that it's updating in real time because we have that repaint in place. All right, so we're getting the count now. Cool. So with that, we have that first part. This will help us check to see if we can even replace stuff. Because if we don't have anything selected, then obviously we're not going to be able to replace anything. So that's our first check that we're going to do. Um, but before we get into that, what I want to do is uh, drop down another GUI layout space up here. And just put that right there. And then right below here, I'm going to... Um, do the object field. And in order to do this, I need to create another private variable up here that is of type game object. 
and this is going to be our wanted object. So in this uh, video series, we'll just have it support a single object. All right, I'll probably extend it later on to support multiple objects and randomization and all that cool stuff that you know makes these tools really useful for level designers. All right, so now that we have that private variable up here, uh, what I want to do is I want to place that down there, and it's going to be equal to the result of whatever this GUI layout dot object field has inside of it. So let's take a look at the arguments for this. So you can see it has 10 overrides. It's quite a few. So um, the one that we actually want, all right, let's go down here and see. There we go. Is that? Nope. There we go. That's the one that I want. The very last one. All right. So I'm going to provide it a string, a label, and then we need to provide it the object. All right. And that's going to be this wanted object. We need to provide it a type. That's going to be game object. And then we want to say that we do want to allow scene objects in order for this to work. So you can lock that off and say it only supports um, objects from the project. But we do want to allow any object to be assigned. So I'm going to set that to true. OK, so first thing that we want to do is um, call this the replace object, like so. And then we want to use that wanted object variable that we created. Then we want to set the type, so type of game object, like so. And then true, because we want to allow scene objects, like so. But you'll notice that it is actually still throwing an error for us. And that's just because it can't implicitly convert this object type to game object. So we need to do one more check. Even though we're telling it the type of object right here, <laughs> we still do need to do the cast. So let's do game object, like so. And that takes care of that. So if we were to flip back over here to Unity, you'll see that now when it finishes compiling, we'll get an object field. So now we can drag and drop stuff into this. All right, so you can take a sphere and put it in there. All right, or you can take something out of the, the project hierarchy and put it in there. So really flexible way to allow artists and designers to utilize stuff in the hierarchy or the project. All right, so the last UI element that we need is our button. So I'm just going to put that right below the object field. And we're going to say if um, our GUI layout dot button. All right, so we're going to create a button. And it's inside a GUI layout, not editor GUI layout. And what I'm going to do is just call this replace selected objects. And I'm going to set a couple of these options. You notice that most of these UI elements have these GUI layout options. So in order to use these, we just say GUI layout dot expand width. So it's one of the options. I'm going to set it to true because so I want it to stretch all the way across the, the layout. And we're going to say GUI layout dot height. All right, something like uh, 40. So I'm explicitly set, set the, uh, the height of that button. OK, cool. So now that we've got that in place, when we hit this button, what I want to do is I want to go and start the replace functionality. OK, so let me make a little space here. So we need a custom function for that. So I'm going to say void and say replace selected objects like so. Very cool. And so within that button, within this if check, if the button returns true, it's going to call this method now. All right. Cool. So now we're going to come down here and we're going to execute all this code. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to check our current selection count. Because if we don't have anything selected, uh, we shouldn't uh, allow the user or allow the tool to try to do anything else because we can't replace it with anything. So we're going to say if the current selection count is equal to zero, then let's just return. So we'll say return. But we should also, because we're making tools, right? And you know we're not going to be the only person using this tool. Uh, we're going to have a lot of end users basically using the tool. We need to tell them what happened. We can't just let it close the window and, you know, have it be done. It's nice to give them information. So what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the editor utility dot uh, display dialog. All right. And just the simple one. OK, so you can see the arguments for this. It needs a title, a message, and then a string for the button that is on its little dialog. So for the title, what we're going to do is we're going to say replace objects warning. And we're going to give a message. So we're going to say um, at least 
one object needs to be selected to replace with exclamation mark we're serious and we'll say okay for the the button all right so we'll be able to test this out right away okay so let's jump back into unity now and take a look over here so we should get our button here once we finish compiling there we go so now we've got our button in place very cool so if I were to hit the replace selected objects we're gonna get this display dialog and it's telling us that we need to select one object at least one object so we can replace it with something and we've got our OK button so that's perfect the next check that I want to do down here so let's let's give ourselves some notes we'll say uh, check for selection count like so and then we're going to say check for replace object okay so what if we don't actually assign anything to this object field right here, if wanted object is null, then we shouldn't let the tool do anything either. So we're going to say if wanted object, and in this case we can say if not wanted object, okay, then let's do the same thing here and just change out that message. Now you could always just write a single method, right? So you don't have to do all this. You could just, well, why don't I just do it? <laughs> so we'll say uh, void custom dialog something like that and what I'll do is I'll just copy all of this put that in there and we'll say string a message like so and we'll just replace this all with that message it'll be a lot cleaner this way a little more pro all right so let's uh, copy this whole message right here and then we can actually just get rid of that and we'll just call custom dialog and pass in our string it's a little better a little cleaner faster everything all right so um, now what we need to say is we need to say the uh, the replace object is empty please assign something there we go Cool. so now we didn't have to replicate all that code and it's actually quite cleaner this way so cool let's go and test this out now okay so I'm going to jump back into unity and we'll select a couple objects this time but leave the replace object object field empty all right so I'm gonna go and select some objects here and say replace objects and this time we got the warning that says the replace object is empty please assign something so our, our error checking code is working. So with that, I'm going to close out this particular video. And in the next, what we're going to do is get the replacement functionality in place. So that way we are replacing it with uh, cubes. Let's just do cubes. All right. And we need to pick up the trans translation and the rotation and scale for all this stuff. So thanks so much.